This video was brought to you by Brilliant, and the first 200 people to use the link below will get 20% off an annual premium subscription. In the grand scheme of things, big changes to the EU are few and far between. Getting all 27 member states around the table to agree on something is tough. Some, like France and Germany, are doggedly in favour of more Europe, while others, like Denmark and formerly the UK, have been notably less keen. Regardless, French President Emmanuel Macron has come out fighting after his re-election, calling for the creation of a new community of European democracies as soon as possible. So, in this video, we're going to take a look at what Macron is proposing, if it could bring Britain back into Europe, and why the idea might have trouble getting off the ground. In a speech to the European Parliament last Monday, Macron called for a major overhaul of Europe's political scene. During the closing of the Conference on the Future of Europe, the recently re-elected president urged for the creation of a new European political community, as well as suggesting revisions to the current EU treaties to speed up decision-making. This new European political community would, in Macron's words, enable democratic European nations who adhere to our values to find a new space for political cooperation, security, cooperation in energy, transport, investment, infrastructure, and the movement of people. Crucially, Macron said that joining wouldn't mean that you couldn't in the future join the European Union, and it also wouldn't be limited to those who have left the European Union. Given that only two member states have ever left the European Union, Greenland and the UK, and when you consider that Greenland's departure took place nearly 40 years ago, you can see who Macron was directing that statement at. So what would this new European political community actually involve? Well, we don't actually know, and neither does Macron. According to Georgina Wright, a senior fellow at Institute Montaigne, Macron's proposal is a very French thing. Make a proposal first, and figure out how it would work after. Nonetheless, Macron's proposal recognises an important fact that's been made clear during the war in Ukraine. While the EU is usually enough, sometimes Europe also needs a Europe-wide response, including non-EU members like the UK. And as such, he believes it will be better if the EU had some sort of forum for communicating with these other non-EU members that are still key parts of the continent. Anyway, Macron's call for a European political community isn't all that new. Macron himself acknowledged that it was a rehash of an idea first proposed by his predecessor, Francois Mitterrand, back in 1989. Just a matter of weeks after the Berlin Wall fell, Mitterrand proposed the idea of a broad European confederation that would associate all states of the European continent in a common and permanent organisation for exchanges, peace and security. In fact, not only does Macron's plan rehash his predecessor's proposal, but it also rehashes his own idea. After all, Macron has, in the past, called for a multi-speed Europe of concentric rings. However, perhaps the most significant problem with Macron's proposal is its hierarchical nature. While both Macron's new and old plans have been proposed with the intention of keeping the European Union together, both plans ultimately entail a tiered approach to Europe, those in the club and those not. And for much of Europe's history, there has been a core set of countries and an outer set. The countries fully subscribe to European projects and those with opt-outs. And while on paper a multi-speed Europe sounds great, countries can just go at their own pace. In reality, it's not that simple. Many Eastern European nations, for instance, are afraid that in a two-speed or multi-speed Europe, they're going to get left behind as the richer West presses on with deeper and deeper cooperation. But to be clear, a multi-speed Europe already exists. Well, kind of. Not every single member state is at the same level of European integration. Take, for instance, the Eurozone. While every member, barring Denmark, is obligated to eventually join the single currency, currently there's a divide between those who have foregone their national currency and those who are holding out. The same story applies to Schengen. 
While the overwhelming proportion of EU member states have signed up for Schengen and removed border controls, some haven't. Nonetheless, while there might already be some intra-EU divisions, Macron's proposal will most likely face resistance because it implicitly advocates for a European hierarchy, which will make some smaller European states anxious. So that was Macron's first proposal, a new community of European democracies. Not quite a new EU, but a more informal grouping which allows EU countries to connect directly with non-members in order to align on various strategies and plans. That way, nations like Norway could be brought into the fold for the first time, while the UK could be brought back in. This time though, without the level of EU control or restraint that both reject. Instead, just as a more aligned continent, promoting a more open dialogue between the two groupings. Macron hopes that such a plan would help the EU move faster when it comes to Europe-wide strategy. But it's not just collaboration with external countries that Macron wants to improve. He's also looking to speed up the EU itself. For better or worse, Macron is concerned at the speed of European responses, be it the financial crisis, the sovereign debt crisis, pandemic, or war in Ukraine. Macron believes that Europe should be going faster, which would require the way decisions are made in the EU is changed, i.e. treaty change. Now, it's safe to say that decision making in the European Union is complicated, so we won't bore you with every single minute detail. But the crux of the matter is that as things stand currently, the EU, or more precisely the Council of Ministers, uses something known as qualified majority voting in order to pass legislation. Qualified majority voting, also known simply as QMV, requires two conditions to be met. 55% of member states voting in favour, currently 15 out of the 27, as well as the votes in favour being cast by member states representing at least 65% of the EU's population. Crucially, QMV does not apply to all decisions made by the EU. Specifically, there's a big policy area where unanimity is required, the EU's common foreign and security policy. Proposals on matters of security and defence coordination require all member states to agree, meaning that just a single dissenting voice can cause a proposal to fail. And Macron wants to change that and move decisions away from unanimity towards QMV, a view that's actually supported by the European Commission President Ursula von der Leyen. Speaking just before Macron, von der Leyen said that unanimity voting in some areas simply no longer makes sense if we want to be able to move faster. And speaking the week before, the Italian Prime Minister, Mario Draghi, widely credited as saving the euro, also called for treaty change and a reassessment of the unanimity rule. The problem, though, is that treaty change is hard. The European Council, i.e. the heads of state, not von der Leyen, must unanimously support calling for an intergovernmental conference in order to amend the treaties, something that's just not on the minds of a significant proportion of member states. In fact, 13 member states signed a joint letter on the very same day as both Macron and von der Leyen's speeches, warning against unconsidered and premature attempts to launch a process towards treaty change. Something they believe would entail a serious risk of drawing political energy away from the important task of finding solutions to the questions to which our citizens expect answers, and handling the urgent geopolitical challenges facing Europe. Obviously, if 13 of the 27 members of the EU are hesitant about treaty change, which is hard enough when everyone's on board, then it doesn't look likely that this is going to happen in the immediate future. Nonetheless, when or if the political temperature in Europe cools down, we should expect to see Macron, the EU's foremost political heavyweight, pushing harder for a leaner and meaner Europe. This video was brought to you by Brilliant. Brilliant is an online STEM learning platform that teaches you everything you need to know to better understand the modern world. Baffled by investment and finance? Well, they've got courses on maths and quantitative finance. Confused by coding? Well, they've got everything from the very basics right through to quantum computing. Unclear why you're losing millions? Well, there's no guarantee that Brilliant can help with that, but they do have courses on cryptocurrency and gambling. You get the point. 
Everything you want to learn about STEM is covered by Brilliant. And the best thing is that all of their courses are designed by award-winning instructors and built upon the principle of active learning. So you're gaining STEM knowledge by actually doing it. So if you want to improve with STEM, then you can sign up to Brilliant at brilliant.org forward slash TLDR EU. And the first 200 people to do so will get 20% off an annual premium subscription. Thanks for supporting the channel.